In the last video, we defined singular homology, and now I want to introduce a relative version of it. But before I do this, so let me write down the title. Before I do this, I want to draw a little picture to remind you about the idea of singular homology. So the idea was the following. We got our topological space, say X. And in this space, we consider chains. Now let us look at the case N equals one. So one chains, one such one chain could look like this. Yeah, so I would think about this as the formal linear combination of all these simplices. Let's give them also orientations so that we know how the map works from the one simplex to the space. And this would now just be the formal linear combination of all those one simplices um, with coefficient one in this case. Yeah, just the formal sum of all those. And in this case, this one chain is a one cycle because always these, uh, the boundary map will map the ends of the one simplices um, with such signs that they cancel out. Yeah, this was sort of the idea we'd already tried to convey last time with this triangle. So this also applies here. So this is gonna be a cycle. And the question is, will it define a non-trivial element in homology? So the question is, is the cycle a boundary or not? And in this particular case, it's pretty obvious that it is a boundary and therefore will not define a non-trivial element because what you can do is, you can take a point here in the middle and then you can draw triangles like this. And um, the orientation will always be that from one triangle, the face gets the one orientation and from the other triangle, it gets the other orientation. And therefore these faces will all cancel out in the end, like for all these triangles, um, for all these sides of the triangles here in the middle. And the only thing which will remain are the sides on the outside. And precisely these will form the cycle which we, with which we started. So this is sort of the idea that this will define, uh, this cycle will be a boundary and therefore will be zero in homology. And now the idea of um, relative um, singular homology is that um, we do not only care about whether a cycle is a boundary, but we would also allow that it is a boundary up to simply C's in a certain subspace. And in this case, it would still be um, a boundary or an, a zero element in homology. So what could, for example, happen is that if we excise here from the space, like if there was a hole in the space like this, then we could not draw this anymore, yeah? Because of course the point here would not no longer be part of the space, so only the outside here would be the space, and this doesn't work anymore this argument. But in this case, what one could do is, let's draw the same thing again. What one could do in this case, if this circle here is excised, so there's only space outside here, what one could do then is, if you have this one cycle, like this, Again, and so this space here, this circle here would be the subspace, let's say A, so the whole space is X and this small thing is A. Then what one can do is, one can now draw triangles again, but in such a way that um, one also gets sides of these triangles which lie in this A. So for example, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So A is the circle. A would be the circle and in the, this picture. The interior of the circle is not there, right? The in interior X. of the circle is not there. This is how I yeah. think about this, exactly. And yeah, I mean, actually they don't have to go like this. I mean, you, it can be as whatever you like, but so that always pairs of triangles match up here. And I don't know, something like this. And um, where do I need another triangle? Maybe here. So, okay, so I hope one can still recognize um, what's meant here. So what would happen in this case is one has this two chain of triangles here, um, 
which has um, the property that the boundary of it will first of all have one component, the original one cycle we started with here, but now as a second component, it will also have some chains here in the subspace A in, on this circle around here. And the idea is that all those simplices which lie in the subspace do not matter. We just drop them on the floor, we don't care about them, and we would still, still say in this case um, that this um, cy one cycle here is a relative boundary and therefore a zero element in homology. So this was my attempt to say what's going to happen formally now. So, so relative to A. Relative to A, yeah, mm -hmm. so exactly. Yeah, so maybe I can write it here. So this is the picture for homology in X. And in this case, we would consider homology in X relative A. This is sort of what we want to define now. Okay. And to do so, we're going to do the following now. We consider, we'll consider the relative singular chain complex. So definition. Let X comma A be now a pair of topological spaces. <coughs> then the Now I cannot pick my pen. Well, let's see. Ah. Then the nth relative singular chain group is Cn xA. So this is now defined with respect to the subspace A. And we simply define this as we take the absolute singular chain group from last time. And of course, all those chains which lie in A are a subgroup of this group, and we again form the quotient. So I just mod out C and C A. Yeah? So this is a free Lebelian group. This is a subgroup. I mod out the subgroup, and I get a quotient, which is by definition the nth relative singular chain group. Okay, and now we had a boundary map which we defined um, last time and it turns out that this boundary map will also induce boundary maps on the relative singular chain complex because it will map the simplices in A, so the n simplices in A or the n chains in A to n minus one chains which are still in A. Yeah? So this is the point now, observe that the boundary map defined last time has the property that it maps the subgroup C and C A into the n minus one simplices again of A. So again, why is that? That's because the boundary map was defined by just um, restricting simplices to the faces. But if the whole simplex lies in A, then of course so do those faces and therefore you get uh, an element uh, in the one lower chain group, still with values in A. Okay, so this has the effect that we now got an induced, so let me just make a curved arrow here, we've got an induced chain complex of relative chain groups. plus one goes to C n sing x a and here comes D n and so on and so forth. Yeah. And now you can guess what happens. We can also define relative cycles and relative boundaries and the homology is going to be the quotient of cycles modulo boundaries. So let's define C n Z n x comma a as the kernel of this new um, boundary homomorphism, the induced one on the quotients, on this relative complex. And let's define V n x a as the image 
of dn plus one. So those chains which have a free image under dn plus one. And this gives the following definition. The nth relative singular homology of the pair xa is the quotient h n sing xa of relative cycles mod relative boundaries. Okay, and actually it turns out that in this fashion uh, we get the singular homology which we will um, axiomatize in the next video. So if A is the empty set, yes. we would get back the definition that you had in the yes. last video. This is actually a good remark we should put down. So this is sort of more general, this concept, than the one before, because if we take here as singular homology of X relative to the empty set, then what we get as the chain complex, well, we just factor out the trivial subgroup, which has no effect on those groups, and therefore the chain complex is just the ordinary absolute chain complex and the homology of this chain complex is just the ordinary homology we had before and therefore this is a proper generalization yeah this we give back h n of x could we could we go back maybe once more to the picture you had in the beginning yes. now with definition of relative boundaries yes let's do that okay. so right so this picture that this well, the f if you take the first picture, so you have this circle shape, shaped um, one chain. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a hole in your space, then this is a boundary. If exactly. You, yeah. If you do have a hole, this would be not a boundary in mm -hmm. this picture. But it would be a boundary if um, if you consider the the relative homology so it is a boundary in the relative chain complex mm -hmm. so just I to i just want to make uh, clear the, the difference again between this relative boundaries and relative cycles and non-relative cycles and non-relative boundaries yeah, so, so you're talking now about this picture right so this, yeah talk this, about this picture this would be a two chain first of all these triangles Mm -hmm. Yeah, and its boundary is this circle. Its boundary is in the relative In the relative context. version, it is this circle, exactly. Because yeah. you drop, you ignore exactly. somehow, you divide out this, yeah. this uh, circle exactly. that lies in A. So, yeah. so what, what the boundary morphism gives you is it gives you um, sides here, so these one simply sees here. It also gives you one simply sees which lie here. I mean, this triangle, which is badly drawn, but this has a side here. But this side lies in the subgroup, which is factored out, and therefore it's zero. Exactly. So, and yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly. So, this, so this, is a, this is a relative boundary. Yes. It's a relative boundary. It's trivial in the first homology, but it's mm -hmm. not trivial in the absolute first exactly. homology. Yeah. Of so in yeah. this, yeah, that's exactly right. In this picture here below there, it is a relative um, boundary, but not an absolute one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, one last remark we should probably make is that it turns out that homology actually is a functor. Yes. Yes. So maybe let me give because that was the, the whole point to construct new functors. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the chain complex flex itself is um, easily seen to be a functor. I mean, you only have to see that mapping a set to this uh, set of singular simplices is a functor, which is clear. And afterwards, we defined it by a functor. Yeah, it was the three abelian group construction, which is a functor. So the chain complex construction is functorial, and the only thing one then has to see is that taken homology of the chain complex is likewise a functor. Right. But with this relative groups, what's the right domain category for the functor? Because now you have two spaces. Yes. So then we had to introduce a topological category, 
called top two. I don't know if we did before. I don't think so. Okay, so maybe let's do this as the last remark. So with this definition, um, singular or relative singular homology is a functor. From top two, how do you want to write it? Just a two or an two exponent in brackets? And two in, in brackets. In brackets. Brackets or parentheses? Brackets. Like this? I think was the. Okay. Uh, no, then I meant the other. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> top two, two abelian groups. Yeah, and we already know what the category of abelian groups is, and the category of top two has objects, pairs of topological spaces, oops, xa, so pairs xa, where a is just a subspace of x, yeah, topological spaces, and morphisms should also be clear. So a morphism in this category from one pair to another. Oops, there should also be a different name now. Is a continuous map from X to Y, which carries the subspace A into the into the subspace B. Yeah. Continuous with F of A lies in D. Exactly. So this clearly is a category and homology, singular homology as we defined it is a functor. And now the rules of the game are, are how to characterize this functor axiomatically. And this is gonna be the subject of the next video.